thank you for the introduction. So, um, my name is Hongjun Choi from Purdue University. So, today I'm going to talk about uh, my paper, Detecting Attack Against Robotic Bakers, the, a Control uh, Invariant Approach. This is a joint work with my colleagues from uh, computer science and mechanical engineering. We are all from Purdue University. And this work is sponsored by uh, ONR. So uh, I believe most of you, all of you know what RV is, robotic vehicles, or the autonomous vehicle is very famous recently. So for example, the hobby drone or delivery drone and the military UAV, also the self-driving car and the passenger drone, even the underwater robot. So then uh, let's take a look at the more uh, the, the, the detail for the internal architecture of RV system. So basically the robotic vehicles are the type of cyber physical system that operate in the physical world under the control of a computing system. So the different component in the computing system, the controller is core part that take uh, the, the set point and the current state from the sensor and generate the actuator signal. This actuator signal actually move the, uh, the vehicle physically and the resulting state is then sensed by sensor. And this information will be fed back to the controller. And this continuous loop actually uh, makes uh, the bake operation smooth and uh, stable. So uh, with increasing usage of uh, this RVs, uh, security has uh, become a critical problem, yeah, of course. So in the perspective of, uh, perspective of uh, security, there could be many different attack vectors, uh, not only the cyber domain, but also physical domain. So uh, many of uh, the recent and previous work is mostly focused on the cyber domain uh, by uh, using the soft software defense techniques such as uh, control flow integrity or the memory isolation and so on. These techniques are pretty good to defend the cyber attack, mostly uh, uh, launch it through the cyber vector. But so the physical problem, physical domain, uh, the physical attack probably uh, not enough to be defended th uh, through the existing cyber uh, security techniques. So we focus on the physical attack. And the attacker may uh, corrupt and inject the signal through the physical and external means and uh, attacker can uh, 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 attacker can inject signal in random or control manner. So our assumption is the attacker cannot uh, do runtime corruption to the control program. So uh, our control uh, monitoring checking cannot uh, code cannot be uh, compromised at runtime. So for the better understanding, I will introduce uh, the the motivation example. Uh, this uh, the example used the sensor spoofing attack on the gyroscopic sensor using the acoustic noises. That is a very a well known attack on the uh, the quadrotors. And this uh, figure illustrates the attack and attack consequences. Uh, in the flight mission, it's supposed to take off from the home position and move to the waypoint one and two. In the middle of when waypoint one and two, we will inject some acoustic noise attack. And then eventually drone will be crashed. And this graph shows the internal change of attitude, the roll angle. Yeah, after the attack, the, the measurement will be highly fluctuated and deviate from the expected value. So uh, let, let's take a look at the attack, uh, how the attack compromised the system internally. So our target is actually the a binary executable, not uh, the source code, but for the better understanding, I'll use the source code uh, for the example. So the, for, the first one is the main control loop that uh, is a core part of the control program and invoked uh, regularly at certain frequency. And this uh, main control loop start by uh, reading the measurement at line three, and then the target value is comp uh, computed by uh, the navigation logic uh, based on the plan, uh, flight plan. And then it invoked the uh, attitude controller. This is uh, the basic PID based controller. So based on the target value and the current value, it generates error. 
subsequent calls yeah, will generate the actuation signal based on the error and the PID gains. This actuation signal will be transmitted to the motor uh, or the actuators. So this is a normal operation. However, during the, uh, uh, the, the sensor spoofing attack, this angle value will be compromised, and subsequently, this value will be uh, used in the attitude controller, and the error, uh, the, the error calculated by a control uh, function will be corrupted. This corrupted value will be transmitted to the motor or actuator signal, uh, actuators. So in the next iteration, the angle, the angle value also will not be uh, correctly reported by the sensor because the sensor will be uh, still in the compromise. So uh, to detect such a attack, we propose the control invariant uh, approach. So actually, we are inspired by the program invariant checking. That is traditional uh, programming uh, technique to defect, uh, detect anomaly of the program by uh, program bugs or some exploits. So uh, like the program invariance, but we propose the control invariance that uh, actually detect the external physical attacks. Uh, control invariance is kind of models. It models control algorithm, physical property, and the law of physics. So it specifies uh, the system behavior as a set of input, output, and state, uh, state variables. So in the current state x, given input u, and the vehicle has a next state at uh, time t plus 1. The output is dependent, depends on the uh, next state. So our control invariance can be uh, represented in the, this state space equations. So uh, it basically uh, uh, specifies the relationship between input, output, and state, uh, current state, and next state. So any deviation of this relationship will be considered as anomaly or attack. Uh, uh, let's uh, see the previous example again. And so we will inject some uh, code, invariant checking code, in the middle of main loop. And this main loop uh, predict the next state at runtime, and this prediction will be compared. Oh, sorry, this prediction will be compared with the uh, actual measurement. Uh, in the overall architecture, our state space equation uh, will be the counterpart of this uh, boxed area, and at runtime, this equation will calculate the y value, y the model response that will be compared with the original uh, output. So uh, we may have uh, uh, some uh, questions. So how we can extract the control invariance and how can we insert that uh, in, uh, the invariance into the control program? So this is all the uh, workflow. So we have a three uh, step to do this. Control invariance extraction and binary reverse engineering and monitoring generation. I'm going to talk about the first step. So the main technique we use to extract control invariance is a system identification, so which is a mature and well-known technique in the control engineering. So I can say this is a physical counterpart of program uh, reverse engineer. So no, basically, it given the model template and pri uh, profile data, SI try to find the best fit model. So here, uh, basically, SI requires two inputs, the model template and input output profile data. So model template uh, consists of two main components, dynamic template and control template. Dynamic template is uh, uh, the uh, specific uh, vehicle uh, independent and but control template we use PID control to approximate the advanced uh, the, uh, the existing the real controller based on these two inputs the system identification try to uh, find a, a best matching coefficient because the, the previous template has uh, unknown uh, parameters then uh, this uh, instantiated uh, 
equation will be transformed to the state space equations. This resulting ABCD matrix is actually uh, uh, instantiate our invariant model. In this process, I want to emphasize that our approach is very generic because we use the same uh, the same dynamic template for the same type of vehicle, and we use a general PID uh, control template to approximate the complex one. So this allows to avoid a manual a per bake control model generation. So we extract the, contr uh, uh, the control invariant model in the previous step. So in this step we will uh, get uh, information uh, about uh, to instrument our uh, control program to insert our control invariant code. Uh, here is the example call graph of the control program. So among these subroutines, the, to insert uh, our the monitoring code, the first step is to identify the, the location. So, um, so observation we use here is control loop is regularly triggered with a certain uh, time rate. So that means it has uh, the high execution frequency, whereas its parent does not. So in this example, the uh, the green box is a control loop. It is it's uh, invoked around eighty thousand times, whereas the its parents uh, executed just once. <coughs> So we uh, collect dynamic call graph with the function execution counts using uh, binary analysis tools. And we search the, the uh, function that has a high frequency count uh, top, uh, from top to bottom. So um, once we identify the control loop, location of control loop, the next step will be uh, identify important program variables because uh, yeah, recall that recall our uh, previous invariant monitoring function that requires two important variable: target state and current state. So then, how we can identify those memory location of corresponding variables? The key point is we uh, try to map the value traces with the model output. So we first collect the value traces for the program variables in the control loop. So specifically, we use a line to instrument and collect all the value traces, the memory lies in the control loop. And then at the same time, we generate a model output for the same state under the same input. It, it, it should have some pattern. So basically, we, we use the, this uh, model uh, output to search corresponding values and so the memory location. So the uh, last step, mod, uh, monitor generation, I'm going to explain how the monitor <coughs> parameter will be selected. So we require two, two uh, important uh, monitoring parameters, window size and threshold. Um, so our framework uh, will provide a guideline to select the proper value systematically. Okay, first to determine the window size, we need to consider slightly different the control uh, speed because our uh, the approach is based on the approximation based on the, 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 the simple PID control. So in this graph, there are two time sequences from real and model under the same, same uh, mission. So as you can see, the uh, two points are semantically same observable uh, point, but uh, those are located in the different time point. So because of this, we cannot compare two, uh, two sequence to uh, the output uh, point to point. So we we uh, we need to consider this time difference, uh, the different control speed. So we use a, a dynamic time uh, warping algorithm. Basically, this algorithm allows us to align two time series and identify the maximum time difference. So the window size should be larger than the, this maximum time warp. Once the monitoring window size is uh, selected, then we measure the 
all uh, we uh, within the wind each window we accumulate intrinsic error for the for a wide range of uh, normal operation and threshold should be larger than the maximum observed intrinsic errors so far uh, i explained how the ci uh, works uh, let's move on to the evaluation section so for the extensive uh, evaluation we use 10 different uh, vehicles, including quadrotor, a hexarotor, and ground rover. So uh, we use four-year uh, devices, and the others are virtual devices in the simulation. We also uh, simulate the three different uh, the physical attack, sensor spoofing, and the control signal spoofing, and the parameter corruption attack. For the sensor spoofing and the control signal spoofing, we insert some the the attack code into the con uh, into the interface between controller and sensor and inter uh, interface between controller and actuators so we simulate uh, the this uh, attack because we don't have a special devices to actually uh, launch the physical attack so uh, in the evaluation we focus on the two main aspect effectiveness and efficiency for uh, the effectiveness evaluation, we did a variety of experiments in the different conditions. Uh, due to the time limit, I will introduce the, the essential uh, experiments. This is normal behavior and estimation. In these ex experiments, we want to validate that our CI framework actually predicts the, the normal behavior correctly with uh, very small errors. So, uh, not to uh, make false uh, alert. In this graph, the red line indicates the measurement and blue line indicates prediction. As you can see, it's pretty close. And the error below the orange line has a very small comparing to the error threshold. And we also uh, did uh, the attack evaluation. So we launched the three attack under the 20 missions on each devices, and the, out, the, the result uh, was the zero force negative rate with the uh, uh, average 0.2 second detection time. So um, we also measured different uh, overhead for the runtime. Uh, the, the last column showed the runtime overhead. So uh, the maximum overhead we observed is uh, 2. 3, so it's uh, really small overhead. This is because our uh, control invariant checking code is very simple, very uh, small operation for the matrix multiplication or uh, the error calculation. Here's a case study. Uh, we took actually uh, many uh, videos for uh, six attacks on two different uh, real vehicles. Among them, I will show the sensor spoofing attack. Like the motivation example, uh, in this case, Iris Plus fly mission where the, it take off from home and go to waypoint. We will inject a costing noise, actually simulate the attack, and then immediately crash. Yeah, that's and and ground control system show the error message. Yeah, as you can see, it still has a crash. Yeah. But we can show the error message. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think this is uh, not enough to to uh, for the safety yeah, mechanism. So actually, in our uh, okay, in our ongoing project, yeah, we are working on the specific recovery action after some uh, some action after attack detection. Yeah, fortunately, our detection technique is very fast to do something after uh, right after it attack detection. This is internal view. So uh, these are related work. So in, in conclusion, yeah, we propose a novel physical attack detection technique for the robotic vehicles. So our CI framework is very generic using the system identification and common model template. And uh, our approach is software-only approach without the hardware redundancy. And uh, our technique can be applicable to the binary executable without any source code. 
And in the evaluation, we have shown that the high attention accuracy with a very low runtime of red. Thank you. That's all uh, for today. Thank you. We have time for questions. If you have questions, please come forward to one of the microphones because we would like to record your questions. Hello. I really enjoyed the talk. Uh, my question is, uh, so, uh, so you use some reverse engineering techniques to identify the place that you need to inject that attack. Yeah. Uh, I, I just as a wondering, did you think about some hypothesis uh, tes uh, testings uh, instead of uh, reverse engineering? And another one is. Uh, so I'd, I'd, can you rephrase the first question? I don't understand. Uh, my, my first question is mm -hmm. instead of reverse engineering, you mm -hmm. just use some hypothesis testing solutions because mm -hmm. it's uh, at the end of the day, it's kind of a stochastic process. You just use some hypothesis testing to figure out w which point you, you need to inject the data mm -hmm. and the other one is uh, uh, the, the threshold that you use should be bigger than the threshold of the original uh, data right is yeah. it i just want to confirm that i understood it correctly yeah i will ask i, I will answer the for the second question first yeah okay. we use ratio hold to uh come up with the intrinsic error because we, our approach is basically the approximation mm -hmm. so always the intrinsic error will be always exist Yes. Yeah. Sure. So we have to cover. Uh, you have to distinguish this intrinsic error and actual inflicted error caused by attack. So that's why we use threshold and window. Yes. And for the sec uh, second, uh, first question, uh, uh, we use a binary reverse engineering, right, mm -hmm. to identify a specific location. But we use the important uh, the aspect of control program because. Most control program has a similar control, uh, similar architecture. The the closed loop it continuously uh, sends the the environment environmental uh, value from the sensor and and uh, generate actuation. So that means it has uh, the high uh, frequency. So we use that point. Mm -hmm. and so any control program has uh, such a property. So we, I I can apply this back to the another any uh, the. A similar pattern, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, hi. Uh, this is Peng Li from Baidu X Lab. Uh, very nice work. So, from your uh, uh, introduction, I think it's a kind of a dynamic uh, strategy, right? You instrument the right. environment and you compare it against the, the expected output with mm -hmm. the real output, right? Right. So, uh, based on your experiments, so because. In the program analysis field, we all you usually use some, for example, code coverage mm -hmm. to measure okay how much uh, how many uh, how much percentage mm -hmm. of your input can cover the the test the target. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, based on your experiments, how did you do this kind of measurement? You mean your input can cover how much percentage right, of, right. of the possible behaviors? Right. Yeah. So. The main difference from the, the general approach is we use a model template. Actually, model template uh, constrain the, uh, the dynamic system's behavior, right? So the model template has uh, only unknown coefficient. So the input that we use is only used for to identify the coefficient. Mm -hmm. so that's the main difference from point. So we don't, we don't need a bunch of data to uh, to uh, to model the entire system because we use a model template. Okay, so uh, so your strategy could uh, cause the false negatives, right? Mm, false negative, yeah. I see. Yeah, because yeah. of yeah because of in the extreme case, the very strong wind, we cannot we might uh, consider it as a the attack. Yeah, that might cause some false uh, negative. Yeah. Sure. Uh, unfortunately, I have to cut questions short again because we have a tight schedule. Uh, while we are changing to the next presentation, maybe let's first thank the speaker again. Okay. Yeah.